24 hour rule in effect as we welcome in our GM Jim Bowden joining us live from LA. I mean, Jim, I know you've seen a lot of World Series play out over the years, but Freddie Freeman, what he did last night, had the entire world excited to see that. From your vantage point, just talk to us about the incredible play from Freddie Freeman last night and what you saw out of that incredible way the game won. Haley, this was one of the greatest World Series games in history, and this is going to be a World Series game that's talked about not for years, not for decades, but literally for centuries. People are going to refer back to the game one of the World Series. We have never seen a walk-off Grand Slam home run ever in the World Series. We've never seen a game where MVPs were intentionally walked to get to other MVPs. Sometimes it worked, sometimes it didn't. But this game had so many storylines. I mean, we had a great pitching duel with Gary. Cole and Jack Flaherty. That was the first storyline. And then we had in the 10th inning, Jazz Chisholm stealing two bases. And all of a sudden, the Yankees have a 3-2 to two lead. And then we have the debate on the pitching. Should have Cortez pitched that 10th, or should it have been Tim Hill? Should Garrett Cole have pitched later? Like, we had as many questions as we had answers, but what did we get in Game 1 of this epic World Series matchup? We got an extra inning game that came down with two outs, the bases loaded, and Freddie Freeman, who had a sprained ankle, wasn't able to play the last two games of the LCS, ends up getting the Grand Slam to win it. The drama was written for Hollywood, and that's what we got. We got Hollywood over Broadway in game one of this World Series. Yeah, Jim, I want to take it a step further with Freddie Freeman, because for our viewers listening at home, obviously this has been a very tough year for him, right? Dealing with that ankle injury you mentioned, his son uh, dealing with an illness as well. So for, for that moment to belong to Freddie, and you saw what it meant to the rest of the roster too, just how special was that for Freddie in that moment? Yeah, I mean, I don't think it could be more special for everything he's been through. I mean, I think with the health of his son, obviously it's been a very taxing year for him. Um, and then to have the sprained ankle where, you know, he just looked like he was 70% in the playoffs leading to the World Series. None of us thought he would be able to move as well as he did. He got an early game triple. None of us thought that was going to happen. And then all of a sudden they walk intentionally Mookie Betts to get to him. And, Mookie, and Freddie Freeman said he was looking for a fastball in that lane. Uh, he saw, he, he spent a lot of time in the dugout watching how Cortez was pitching to Shohei Otani, and he noticed that he was going fastball in and then slider, cutter away, and he said when he came to the plate, he had a plan, which was first pitch, he was going to look for a fastball in, he was going to look for it, he wanted to make sure he got on top of it, and the pitch came right in his sweet zone. Cortez wasn't able to elevate it high enough to get him out, and he absolutely crushed it. And after he hit the home run, it was really fun to watch him flex to the bullpen. Normally, he waves to them when he homers. This time he flexed. That was pretty cool. And then after he got to home plate and celebrated with his teammates, he ran behind home plate to give his dad a hug through the net behind home plate, in which was a very, very special moment that all of his family came on the field. So it'll certainly be uh, one of the best memories Freddie Freeman will ever have in Major League Baseball. Yeah, I just got goosebumps just listening to you retake us back through that moment when we saw it happen in real time last night. But to that point, Jim, for this Dodgers team looking to go up 2 nothing and then hit the road for Game 3, how do you keep that in perspective, right? Don't let the moments get too high, but also don't get too low. What's the game plan for L.A.? Yeah, for both teams, that's just one game, and you don't let that carry over to game two. The momentum is always your next game starters, and so, Haley, let's talk about that tonight because we have two starting pitchers that are absolutely opposite in how they handle their pitching. Carlos Rodon is a power pitcher, basically going to throw two pitches, fastball, slider. He's also a very emotional player, so he needs to keep his emotions in check. He needs to get ahead in the count and let his stuff play. So his 96 at the top of the zone and the slider is going to be a key. Don't expect him to go more than four or five innings because the way he pitches, he taxes himself physically and mentally. On the other side for Yamamoto, he has much better pitchability. He'll add, he'll subtract, he'll use all four of his pitches, he'll keep the batters off balance. He really knows how to pitch, and his last outing was the best I have seen him all year. He was very impressive. Velocity up to 97 miles an hour. So we got another interesting pitching duel tonight, and hopefully we'll have another classic like we had in game one. Yeah, I want to talk about the Yankees, but before we do, talking about the pitching matchup there, specifically when it comes to Yamamoto, uh, what do you think his availability will be for the remainder of this series? 
Yeah, I think Yamamoto, you're going to talk about in this game, 14 to 15 outs uh, is probably going to be the max that you're going to see from him in this outing. Um, but he seems that he seems to be healthy, and so we'll see how it looks. But I expect him now, after pitching in game two, he may not pitch again to game six. They may want to give him extra rest. So that is something to watch because he does pitch better on five days rest rather than four days rest. All right, let's talk about the other side of this matchup. Of course, the Yankees trying to get one back. To your point, Jim, it is just one game and this can be tied if they do things the right way. So for New York in this one, how do you get a bounce back and, and even this series? Okay, there's two things to look for, Haley. Number one, Aaron Judge has to be accounted for. We haven't seen him in the whole postseason. He's going to have to make us all say, all rise. Like, 50-plus <laughs> homers in the regular season. He's going to be the MVP. we, we got to hear from him. Number two, they got to play better defense. Uh, you showed in the highlights coming in into us talking the mistake that Torres made at second base. you got to be able to scoop that ball. you got to be able to get in front of you. You can't let Otani go to third. Juan Soto misplayed that ball in right field. He went and got a bad angle. That allowed the runner to get the third base as well. That was mistake number two. And then when they pitch ran for Torres, they had to put Cabrera at second base, and he didn't make a play to his right. So the defense cost the Yankees in game one. They can't let them cost the game in game two. So they got to play better defense, and we got to hear from Aaron Judge in game two if the Yankees want to split this series heading back to New York on Monday. Yeah, Aaron Judge, one of five, three strikeouts in game one. Not great, but we know what he can do when he is at his best. We are excited for game two, but Jim, we are all also excited to check in with you as this game goes on. Enjoy the game, and thanks for giving us a preview here for Game 2 of the World Series. It has been an exciting way to start. I don't know that you get a better start to the Fall Classic than a walk-off um, Grand Slam by Freddie Freeman. Game 2 coming your way tonight, 8 o'clock, 8.08 Eastern, I should say, in L.A. before this series then shifts across the country to the East Coast for Game 3 Monday in New York at 8.08 Eastern.